أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يريدون ليطفئوا نور الله بأفواههم والله متم نوره ولو كره الكافرون يكذبون أن يكذبون What you need to understand is this If you see both of the reading with a dotless text it's the same text. Same text. You can read. <laughs> you can read both of the reading here. Wallahum Azabun Alibum Bimakanu Yakdibun or Yukadibun. Anyone Christian here? No. Okay, anyone Christian here? No. Okay, one okay. Christian is a prophet. Okay. Jesus is a prophet. Okay. Samuel is a prophet. Okay. Show me David is a prophet. I ask you. He's a prophet. I ask you. Wait, wait, wait. wait. wait, wait, wait. Hold this, guys. Show me where David is a prophet. Yes, yes. Calm down. Calm down. Okay. Now, now I'm coming back to you. The okay. hole is getting deeper. Yeah, of course. I'm going into it right now. Watch. We're watch. trying to get you out the hole. We want to see where David is a prophet. Wait, wait, wait. When I ask you. You stop, man. There are witnesses here. Listen. Wait. Listen. Majority of people Can I are Muslims. Can yeah. I respond? I'm standing. There's no, is when, you finish, I'll, when you finish, right? I'll respond. So the question is, where did the Bible say David is a prophet? Okay. Show me. Good. Show me. Good question. Show me. Can I respond? Don't, yes. Don't yes. Don't yes. So when I asked you a question earlier, what now, is a prophet? Well, I'm, I'm responding. I, I you, see, you don't have to like my response. You can hate back. it. Keep yeah. So when yeah. I asked you earlier, show us where David was a prophet. I'm, I'm talking. I'm talking now. I don't want to hear you talk no more. So, uh, Acts 2, well, 29 I, to 30. Right. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he, David, was a prophet... Guys, guys! Guys, It's recording, let it be. You didn't right. expect that, did you? Ooh, no, guys, 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 guys. This is why, this is why, before you, oh before you point fingers at Muhammad, yeah. you need to understand your own guys, scripture. Guys, let's not This is the point I'm making. Let's not mock you don't him. know what you're let's, talking about. Let's not mock him. We're not mocking him. We're just right. showing you that it exists. Yeah. No, when Jesus said, I have no hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Salvation in Islam. Can you express what salvation is in yes, Islam? Yes, yes. I will. I will explain. Tell me. Salvation in Islam, as the Prophet Muhammad said, mm -hmm. is in you, the human being, worshiping the Creator without associating partners unto Him. So salvation in Islam is monotheism. Mm -hmm. So monotheism is your salvation. Mm -hmm. Paganism, which is to worship the creation that you are involved in, right. is your condemnation. Okay. This is why it is impossible for a Christian to go to paradise because they worship yeah. the creation mm -hmm. rather than worshiping the Creator. Okay. I so, understand? So, and even though Salvation Even though Jesus himself said you should worship God and God alone and he mm -hmm. said the greatest commandment so, is to worship God why alone is it, why is without it, associating partners why with is him. It that jihad is one of the principles of salvation in Islam. Now jihad is taught by Jesus himself. And oh, yeah. And we are in the Quran. No, in the I'm using uh, 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 your Bible uh, uh, against you. No, 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 no. Can I answer the question? Sure, can I answer sure. the question? Jihad now you when you mention just, 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 when you mm -hmm. mention jihad and use it to criticize us, you dug a hole for yourself. Uh, because Jesus said Can I answer your question? <laughs> Jesus said about jihad, he himself believed in it. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, Bring my enemies here and kill them in front of me. Where? Luke yeah. 19, Where? verse 27. <laughs> <laughs> Luke, so 19, Luke 19 verse 27 <laughs> you find it. Bring my enemies here He said all the people who refuse to accept me <laughs> As their king Bring my enemies <laughs> all in front of me <laughs> You understand? <laughs> Luke 19 you verse 27 <laughs> And kill them The problem with the Christians is that we the Muslims know the Bible more than you oh. <laughs> <laughs> Read that out of your Bible here <laughs> Bishop. Luke 19, 19 verse 27. So when you criticize us about jihad, you trap yourself. But, but, because but, Jesus, he but, preached but, jihad. Read it. Enemies which will not accept that I should reign over them, right. bring either and slay them before it, me. That's yes. right. Yes. You right. did not know that was in the Bible. <laughs>
You don't, you don't know the Bible. You don't know the Bible. No, what, what can I That's say your problem. You don't know the Bible. You know. So by criticizing us about jihad, you <laughs> trap yourself Do and you, you can't know, get away no. from it. You... And the one I'd like to ask you is, um, it's, uh, Muslims have a hard time understanding how a loving, merciful God, it seems like a contradiction, would crucify his beloved son. They, it, it, it goes against, it's a contradiction to them. Why, can you answer this question, why would God, who's so big and so forgiving and loving, not just forgive us all our sins and have to kill the person he loved most in order to forgive us? I think the answer to that is very simple, and that, it, that is that we have a, such a high view of what relationship with God is, and we have such a high view of what sin does to that relationship, that it requires, and these are God's parameters, these aren't my parameters, they're not your parameters, Peggy, it's God's parameters, it, it requires a death, it requires a sacrifice, it requires a, a blood that has to be shed. That sounds It kind seems of horrendous to me that God would do that, and the fact that God would do that is, is all the more appalling to me that he'd do it for you, and he'd do it for me. The fact that he would take on that punishment on himself. It is not something that he imposed on himself. It is something that he chose for himself to do. He chose willingly to do that. To me, it's not horrendous. I'm appalled that God would do that for me. Because otherwise I'm lost, and so is everybody else sitting in this audience here. We're all lost because it, it does take a blood sacrifice for the wages of sin is death. Any little sin is death, according to Romans 6.23. That means we're all dead. It's because the and sin is that? so horrendous. Paul wrote Paul Romans, wrote thank Romans. you. And that's where and we're going to keep doing coming from. Let you me see, finish, though, Shabir. It's because, is, no, Shabir, yeah, before no. you get onto your tirade on this again, <laughs> let me finish. It's very important you see this. It's because of that sin that separated us from a God that God took it upon himself to rectify it himself. Otherwise, we're all dead. Otherwise, we're all dead. And I thank God for that. Mm -hmm. You see, Peggy, actually, this idea was originated by Paul. I mean, he said the wages of sin is death. He made the, the cross the center of his theology. Mm -hmm. And that's why he put so much on it. That's why he said if Christ is not raised, then uh, you're still in your sins. To him, God had to come and die for your sins. But it makes no sense because if God wants, he can forgive us. Just like Jesus taught about the parable of the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15. The son comes back to his father. The father welcomes him with open arms and has a celebration. Nobody has to die for somebody to be forgiven. Because if somebody dies, then there is no forgiveness you know that means we, I just took my full price I'm a cruel judge I just exact the full punishment somebody goes and dies and then I'm happy but if God was loving and kind he should be loving and kind to his son as well and save his son by some other means and uh, Jay said the son was willing but notice that's the representation in the last of the four Gospels but Matthew Mark and Luke showed that the son was although willing he was submitting but not offering himself in the gospel according to John the story is revised so that Jesus actually offers himself because that just looks better but even if the son offers himself it doesn't really solve the problem because if the son loves the people so much that he wants to die for them doesn't the father love the people more than the son loves or equal to why doesn't the father come himself you know I don't shove my son in the in the path of a moving car to go and save somebody I go myself and I protect my son so the whole thing makes no sense Shabir, let, let me... May I just say something on that? Yes. I think it's very simple why he didn't, why he didn't come himself. He did come himself, and that's one of the mysteries of the Trinity. But you have to ask us, why does it that Jesus Christ had to come? The reason why is because you say somebody cannot take on someone else's sin. It depends on who sinned against. See, any time I sin, every time I sin, even if I take that pen from you or that watch from you, and I give it back to you, and I ask forgiveness for you, has that not impinged upon God? Yes, every sin impinges upon God. Even eating of a simple fruit infringes upon God. Therefore, he who was sinned against, it is he who took on that sin against, who took on the punishment of that sin. There is the enormity of what we see in the cross. There is the enormity of what we have seen by Jesus Christ coming down as the Godhead, taking on the sin, though he was the one who was sinned against. Now that Doesn't Islam does not answer. Because what you're saying is that if you sin against me, I cannot forgive you until I punish myself. It doesn't make any sense. If I want to forgive you, I just simply forgive you. What you're failing to understand is that every sin that we do not only has a horizontal consequence, it also has a vertical consequence. But Muslims don't understand that because say, they don't understand the relationship that is there between God and Look, man. When you say God came down himself and died, then he died on the cross. So that means God died. He it's just did. getting worse every time you go. He certainly did. I don't have a problem with that. Okay. If you, if you said the son died, then at least you have the father to, to look after the world. But, but we have no problem. It was God that died on the cross. Why do you have a problem with that? Because if God died, that's blasphemy. Then who would run the world? Who would run the world? <laughs>
or Dr. Zakir? Dr. Zakir, you said there isn't any mistake in Quran. I see more than 20 mistake in Arabic grammar. Brother, he said in Baqarah and Hajj, which is right, Asabi'un or Asabi'in? Number one. Number two, he said in Surah Taha 63, Mistake, mistake. Can you explain that? The brother has asked a very good question. I would like to be more concordant and agreeing. He has mentioned all 20 grammatical points. And the book is referring to by Abdul Fadi. Abdul Fadi, correct? Is the Quran infallible? I can see yeah. something. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, my side is good. <laughs> I will answer all 20 together. Because I've read the book. I'll answer all 20, inshallah. Inshallah. Point number one, brother. Point number one. Point number one to be noted that all Arabic grammar is taken from the Quran. A book which has the maximum level of highest literature. Since Quran is the textbook of grammar and all the grammar is derived from the Quran, the Quran can never have a mistake. It is like you know taking a ruler and the ruler is there, has a measurement and you're saying the measurement is wrong. <laughs> it sounds illogical. Point number two. In the different tribes of Arabia, and you know Arabic, and Dr. William Campbell also will agree with me. In different Arabic tribes, the grammar keeps on changing. In some Arabic tribe, the word is feminine. The same word is even masculine in the other tribes of Arabia. In different tribes, the grammar keeps on changing. And you know, there are various books on the internet you go. 12 grammatical mistake, 21 grammatical mistake, Abdul Fadi, 20 grammatical mistake. Do you think that Christian people took out these mistakes? Who took out these mistakes? Do you know who took out? The Muslims, the Muslim scholars like Zamakshari, what they did that the Quran grammar is so high that it goes against the conventional use of the Arabic. The Quran grammar is so high to prove the Quranic grammar was high, they gave examples. And I'll give you a couple of examples which will answer all these 20 questions. They give the example, like we read in the Quran, it says that the people of Lut, alayhi salam, they rejected all the messengers. They rejected the messengers it's mentioned. Dr. William Campbell said, the people of Noah, they rejected the messengers. We know from history that there was only one messenger sent to them. So it has a grammatical mistake. Quran should have said, the people rejected the messenger, not messengers. I agree with you. With layman grammar like how you and I know, it may be a mistake. But if you read the books written by Arabs, what is the beauty of the Quran? The beauty of the Quran is, why does the Quran refer messengers instead of messenger? You know why? Because we know that the basic message of all the messengers was same. That there is one God. About Tawheed. About Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By mentioning the people of Ruth alayhi salam, the people of Noah rejected the messenger. It says by rejecting Ruth alayhi salam, they are indirectly rejecting all the messengers. <laughs> see the beauty. See the eloquence. Alhamdulillah. You may think it's a mistake. It's not a mistake. Similarly, people like Anush Suraj says that Quran says, Kun Fayakun, be and it is. It should be Kun Fakana, be and it was. Agreed, past tense is Kun Fakana in Arabic. It's not Kun Fayakun, but the Kun Fayakun is more superior. It says, Allah, it was, it is, and can do. Past, present, and future. Thank you, Dr. Naik. What do you believe? What do I, I'm, a, I'm a militant agnostic. What does that mean? It means I don't know. And I, I'll go further. I know I don't know. And what does that mean then? Well, listen to what I just So said. if you don't know, do you concede then if you don't know something and someone else has an opinion on the same subject, you are in no authority no, to I'm say listening. they're wrong? No, I'm listening. I'm always listening. How can I not listen? I'm a militant agnostic. I didn't say that. Sorry? What did you say? You see, that was ironic. You just said you're always listening. You didn't even listen to what I said. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. You're going to do this, you're going to carry on doing this rather than talk about it, rather than defend your... Ah, gotcha! Rather than defend your position, you're going to attack What's my mine. position? Well, I can tell you what your position is. Tell me. No, you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not going to... You gonna, said no, I can tell you your I position! Thought, I thought, After you, yeah. there is nothing that God cannot do. Okay. He what is the thing? Everything. You said nothing. What is the thing? You can't do everything. You still What's don't the point? understand. What's the point? What's the point? You don't understand. What's the point? The point is I'm asking you to define thing. What is the thing? You can't do everything. What is the thing? Anything. Anything. <laughs> what is the you thing? You define it. You define what it. What is the thing? You define it. Okay. Non-thing and thing are entities to each other. You understand? But no, nothing. Oh, what is but the nothing is nothing. Okay, what is the opposite? No, no, nothing wait, is sorry. nothing. Okay, nothing don't exist. I'm not saying nothing. I'm saying non-thing. Nothing don't exist. Non-thing. Nothing non don't exist. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. When you say nothing, okay. Wait, wait. Okay. When you say nothing, wait, wait. Then you can't ask you can't do it. God. Wait. Okay. Can't. What is the thing? I'll tell you through this guy, man. What is the thing? You make me crazy. You are crazy. Am I crazy? Look, look, look. Am I crazy? Let me tell you something. You are making me crazy now. Listen, you know, I went to I went to a madhouse. All of them were saying you're crazy. Listen, when I walked in, they said, "Look at this crazy man." If you spoke to the tree, the tree would reply at least. You tried to confuse us. Confuse us. Yeah, I don't know why. I'm confusing myself. I'm telling you, you are saying God can do anything. I'm asking, what is the thing? Anything. Anything you say. Define. Can you define it? Nobody can define the thing. You telling me? Can you define the thing? Can you define the thing? Yeah. Thing means. Thing, thing means. Thing means. Listen. Thing means anything that exists. It has properties. According to who? Thing. According to who? All philosophers on the planet. All philosophers. All I don't believe first first though. Okay. I don't so, believe that. So why are you using the term thing if you don't know what it means? Hey, brother, this is another question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Allah. Allah. What it means in Arabic? Give me three meanings for Allah. Allah. Not Allah. Not Allah. 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 <laughs> Ala, Ala, okay. give me three millions of Ala. Yeah, go on. Allah is the Ala. You see what's going on with you? Seriously? That's your expert. Uh, even, uh, even, uh, even, uh, even, uh, even, uh, even I know the meaning as being non Arab. What's the question? Can God make a stone? Yeah. Look, God has made a stone. Yeah. And he's trying to lift it. He goes, This is too heavy. Okay. Can God do that? He can do everything. God can do everything. He's God all powerful. He can do everything. Is your power? I answered you. He can do everything. Is he powerful? He can do everything. Is your power? He can do everything. Is your power? He can do everything. Okay, he's angry. He's upset. He's upset. All right, you ready? Yeah. So, uh, so the three meanings are Allah, not Allah. Is it Zia? No, not Allah. Yeah. Quiet, quiet. Don't interrupt. Let him say. Let him say. Calm, calm down. Now, about the idol in Mecca before Islam. Not Allah. Quiet, quiet. Don't correct him. Wait. Let's see the expert. He did not hear him. Not our fault. Not our fault. Allah the God. You are asking you Allah. No meaning. No Allah. So you don't know meaning of Allah. Allah, not Allah. Then what? Okay, wait, 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 wait. Allah. How do you spell it? There is Allah. It's Allah. How do you spell it? How do you spell it? What no, he knows. Can you spell it? Yeah. Allah, Allah. How do you spell it? Allah, Allah. He knows. I, I'm, He's expert. I'm I'm expert. Yeah. He's expert. How do you spell it? He's expert. How do you spell it? Tell me any word in Arabic I would say. Any word. Don't ask all the time. Spell it out. Spell it out. He's expert. Don't help him. Leave him. Leave him. Spell it out. You should, you should be able to hear, right? You can hear properly. The word is Allah. Okay, no answer. Khalas, that's his time. That's the expert. That's the expert. There's a problem with you. Okay, let, let me let me let me ask let me ask Professor Krauss a question. Why is why is incest wrong? It's uh, it's not clear to me that it's wrong. Okay. It's clear to me. It, there's a there's never. No, no. Oh. no, no listen, listen. See, this is precisely the point I'm trying to make, Professor Krauss. Is that I find it quite interesting. Someone who adopts an atheist position would have strong moral judgments about a religious tradition, whereas your moral judgments, at best are relative and subjective. Now, when you look about moral theory, from an Islamic perspective and a religious perspective, you see that objective morals, that even pointing the finger and saying, you know, you're wrong, you're nonsense, Sharia law is backward, these kind of strong emotive things, I think we can only be that emotive and strong in an objective sense if you have God as a grounding for your objective moral values. Because if you take God out of the picture, he's the only concept that transcends human subjectivity. Social pressure, you know that doesn't work. Look what happened in Nazi Germany. You know, for example, evolution, 
makes it end up being ephemeral and empty. If you look at the philosopher of science, Michael Ruse, he said, you think loving thy neighbor as thyself is like you're referring above and beyond yourself. But essentially, it has no true meaning. It's just a product of survival and reproduction. So from this perspective, you don't have an ontological grounding for objective moral truths. The best you could do, what a lot of atheists have done, is, well, we believe in moral re realism, which is, moral truths are just moral truths because they are. Well, Islam just is, and the Prophet Muhammad upon him, he just is, and the Quran just is. That's not an argument. So the reason I asked you that question, sir, was to say, how on earth, from an intellectual perspective, can we point the finger at religions from a moral perspective, and especially today, has been, the irony is, most of your articulation against Islam has had a moral vibe to it, not a rational one. Let me read the rest of it. Okay. And then he says, in your Quran. now go. Everything By the way, this is the Bible. Is referred to she knows that. Muhammad in the Quran as just Is it because moral. you're embarrassed and you don't want me to finish? To read this Lizzie, to you. I can't Lizzie, wait to are you read embarrassed you? You want, or you want me to finish? No, no, you are the one that's going to be so mega embarrassed by this because oh. something that you're so outraged sorry, sorry, sorry. by which, which is actually referred to in here. No, it doesn't. Oh my goodness. It doesn't. Have, some have, some respect. Respect. have respect for your Bible, if not me. Now go attack the Amalekites. Uh, that she goes again. You don't respect this, and you don't respect your Quran. Remember, don't, oh, don't complain. Lizzie, do not complain when I talk to you. Because I can play with this stuff. Carry on. Now go and attack the Amalekites. The next word. So this, God gives a reason. The reason they were basically massacred in this next statement is because of the revenge that God wants to take against the people of Israel. So he says here, now go and attack the Amalekites and totally destroy all that belongs to them. Do not spare them. Put to death men and women, children and infants. See how they separate the children from the infants? Those who are two years and less, the infants. And then it goes on to say the cattle and the sheep and the camels and the donkeys. So do not even spare those domestic animals. Okay, all right? Dear, I haven't finished yet, Lizzie. Animals. So wait a minute. So basically we see the reason. The so we see the reason why this Old Testament, by the way, this is not the Torah. And if she tries to say this is the Torah, she has to prove it where it says the Torah. Okay. That this, the Quran, is, Allah is referring to the Old Testament. Saul, okay? Who, Hashim is actually talking to as well. Allah speaks to Saul. Does it tell Saul to go and kill the children? No, it doesn't. Okay, go on. John. You okay? He said, Verily Allah will be there. Which verse is that you're reading? This is 2249. Sorry, 2? 2249. Okay, Surat al Bakara. Bakara. Okay. Go on, read it. Okay. Show us the killing of children in the Quran, please. Okay. No, this, the killing's not there, but. Wait, wait, wait. Where, is, where is the tallest building in the world? Yeah. Where is the tallest building in the world? One country. No, no, not one country. Okay. Where is which is the richest country in the world? Wait, wait, wait. Which is the richest country in the world? Just if she knows that. Okay, let me educate you on that. It is, it is called Qatar. If you really are peace loving because person, wait, 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 let me, rules, let me, that's why. what funny rules, that's why. what funny rules, I respect people based on their character, <laughs> no one else is laughing, tell me, tell me, more. of course you would never laugh, no, no, by the way, it's not laugh. just Muslims here, yes. there are non-Muslims here, nobody's laughing, who is non-Muslim here, lots of non-Muslims here, there you go, <laughs> So only you're laughing. You're making fool yeah, of yourself. Why are you laughing? Because you're telling Why the jokes. Tell it's them not a all. joke. Tell them all. You have yeah. to respect someone's character. You do not go and see you how rich they are. You don't respect my character. You don't respect my different opinion than you know yours. What? You, know, That's it. Some, you know one thing I'll give you? A piece of advice which is free. Respect is earned, not demanded. The original Christianity, what it came with, Abraham, peace be upon him, uh, Yahya, alayhi salam, peace be upon him, John, they call him, yeah? yeah. Uh, Musa, Moses, peace be upon him. All these mighty messengers and prophets of God, Do you think they came and they taught Tawheed. They taught the oneness of God. They never taught. Did you ever see? You show me. I'll give you 100 pounds. Show me Musa, alayhi salam. Show me Musa, alayhi salam, teaching Trinity. Can I correct you? Show me. 
Can I show you? me from the Torah any scripture you? you want. Can I correct show you? me? What is your evidence? Do what you your believe show me that Moses need listen, your listen, peace? Listen. What is your evidence? Don't tell. I'm when asking you. you. I'm asking you. I'm word. asking you. Look, listen. He wants to focus on Alayhi Salam. Peace be upon him. He can't show me in the Bible single verse where Ibrahim Alayhi Salam any prophet. Where they taught God yeah. is going to be what stripped naked Billah, on a cross and be killed by men. You're telling me God, the creator of everything in the earth, had to become a man to forgive his creation. You're lost this evening. Jesus okay. is at the right but, hand of God. Okay. Those okay. Do you think okay. you are? Peace be upon Jesus. What do you think? Yes, peace be upon Isa alayhi salam. Peace be upon him. Peace be upon him. Peace be upon him the day he was born, the day he was uh, raised alive, the day he will die. Peace be upon Jesus alayhi salam, the mighty messenger and prophet of Allah. When he comes back, he will tell you, I never told you to worship him. والسلام علي يوم ولدت ويوم اموت ويوم ابعث حيا. Peace you comes from Allah. Peace, yeah. peace comes from Allah, not yeah. a man. Yeah. Not a man. So those peace comes from Allah. You, I want to answer good. just what you said about the concept of the Trinity. And yes, I found please. a verse that really spoke to me. Go on, no problem. John 17. I have glorified thee on earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Yes. That first jumped out at me because there is no way that Jesus could not be God if he was not with God before the world was created. Which verse is that, by the way? John 17, verse 5. Verse 5. Now read verse 3. With the one you missed. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the one true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. Who is the one true God? God is Who is the one true God? Yahweh. How many gods are there? There is one God, three parts of okay. it. Okay. When Jesus says one true God, is he pointing to himself or his father? To Yahweh. Oh, is that the father? Yes. Okay. okay. So if, wait, 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 wait. I know she wants to interject. If Jesus is calling someone the one true God, yeah. and there is only one God. How can he be God? And there is only one God, <laughs> then how is he God? Your own Bible, the very words that she quoted, goes against her. The words are right there, but you don't it's want to It's not one of those. What words are there? You see, the reason you're jumping to verse 5 without addressing verse 3, it shows to me that you're not sincere. Can Your paradise doesn't exist. Sid, no one's ever been there. Sid, listen. Hundreds of people have been instead of, to heaven where Jesus instead is. Instead of preaching, let's discuss many it. many Muslims. Let's discuss it. You look on YouTube. Oh my many Muslims God. have died and been to heaven and seen Jesus and come back and converted to Christianity. Yeah. Now, no Mr. one has ever yeah. been to a Muslim paradise with virgins and rivers of wine and loads of food and come back. No one. Sid, you've made the day. Do you know why? You've really clarified it all. Muslims, according to your own admission, who did not believe Jesus is in God, who did not believe in Jesus' crucifixion, they went to heaven. I didn't say that. You said they went you to heaven. You said they went to Jesus. You said they died, they went I'm to... I'm saying the Muslims see, have it died. Seems, I'm sorry to say... Yeah, go on. You can see it on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. Muslim visions and what did you say? If visions of Muslim paradise. Or Muslim visions of paradise. They, did they go to heaven yes. and come back? So they the went to heaven. Islamic state okay. Fighter. So Sid, those Muslims who went to heaven and come back, did they believe Jesus was God before? Before? No. Uh, good. So without believing Jesus is God, they went to heaven. Yes. Without believing Jesus is crucified, they went to heaven. Yes. Ah, oh, there you go. And saw Jesus. So that is what they also believe. went to hell. Which Islam is correct. They saw hell as well. That really shows Islam is correct. Yeah. Thank you for clarifying. Thank you, Sid. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's very good, Sid. Well done.